No Man's Sky is finally available and along with it comes a complete universe full of outlandish creatures, hostile worlds, and epic space battles. There's a lot to discover in No Man's Sky, which is why GameRanks is here to start you off on the right foot with 10 things you need to know when starting a new game of No Man's Sky. Number 10, let's just go over the basics. There's no tutorial in No Man's Sky, so the player is largely left to figure things out on their own. So let's talk about some of the fundamentals really quick. And a lot of this will be obvious to some people, but just bear with me because there are a lot of nuances that people should know about. In the top left corner, we got shields and health. As you can imagine, shields regenerate, health must be restored via special plants or health stations. Bottom left corner, these important meters cover your life support and hazard management systems. Essentially, these are the survival meters in No Man's Sky. And and you're going to want to make sure you always have some resources handy to refill them so they don't deplete all the way. If you find yourself in a position where you need to reach a high spot but don't feel like you have enough jetpack fuel, just hug the wall and keep on boosting upwards. This is called a jetpack climb, and as long as you're touching a wall, you won't deplete your jetpack. And last thing on the basics, let's say you venture out on a planet for like 30 minutes and then think, um, uh, where did I park my spaceship again? If you're looking the opposite direction, you might not even notice that at the top middle portion of the screen, there's a compass that will always point you back towards your spaceship, no matter how far it is. Also, if you find one of these beacons, you can pay an easily obtainable bypass chip to call it over. All right, baby stuff out of the way, so let's move on to number nine, know your elements. One of the things you don't want to do in No Man's Sky is just pick up every single element you come across, especially early on. That's a surefire way to fill up your inventory super quickly and spend the rest of the game dealing with menu hell, which will make your time with No Man's Sky absolutely suck. The fix to this is to know exactly what each element is for and about how much you should carry of each. Carbon is used for a lot, but it's so prevalent in almost every world that you really don't need more than one slot for it. Plutonium is one of the most important elements because it can be rare on certain planets, and without it, you ain't leaving. So always be sure to keep a healthy stock of plutonium, especially since it's versatile and can also be used for things like refilling your mining beam or life support, and it can actually sell for quite a bit too. Thamium is another element that you never want to miss out on early on since it's necessary to refill your pulse drive, and without that, you're pretty much stuck on the planet that you're on. Zinc and titanium are really only necessary on plants with hazardous climates since they are the only elements capable of refilling your hazard suit. And unless you're big on space battles, iron isn't really used for all that much and is typically common enough that you can almost always pass on it unless you specifically need it for something. However, if you are planning on mixing it up in space, definitely keep a healthy supply on board since it can be used to restore your shields and keep you in a fight. Silicates like Heridium and Chrysonite are good to have, but generally can be teleported to your ship as soon as you pick them up so you can stockpile them for whenever you need to build something that requires them. Finally, neutral elements like aluminum, copper, gold, and emerald can be saved so they can sell them later at a good value, unless you're looking to build an upgrade that requires them. Number eight, identify everything. When you first touch ground on a new planet, one of the first things you should do is identify everything you can see, from the rocks to the trees to the animals, even down to the smallest plants. This can be done by holding in the right trigger and simply keeping whatever it is you want to identify in your sight. You're able to name everything you discover and upload it to the database for currency, which quickly adds up and becomes one of the best ways to make money early on in No Man's Sky. Number seven, upgrades. As you explore planets, you'll no doubt come across shelters and bases where you'll be able to scavenge new blueprints to upgrade your exosuit, ship, or multi-tool. Here's the catch though, whenever you upgrade, you give up an inventory slot, so you need to really think about whether that upgrade is worth taking away a spot in an already crowded inventory system. In my experience, the exosuit upgrades usually are not, especially in the early game where the upgrades are generally just slight quality of life things, like being able to run a little bit longer or fly a little bit higher, and having even just one extra spot of inventory space goes a long way. Starship upgrades, on the other hand, will make interstellar combat much more manageable, as it can get pretty rough out there even during your first few space battles. If you really have your eye on a particular upgrade that you don't have the material for, you can actually pin it by pressing triangle, which will set a quest-like notification on your HUD, reminding you what materials you need to create in order to upgrade. Which is really handy because chances are, you're probably going to forget about it by the time you actually come across the resource that you need. Number six, if a planet sucks, don't waste your time with it. With 18 quintillion planets out there in the universe, chances are you're going to come across at least a few that are just terrible. 
If you come across a planet without basic resources that you're looking for, a host of hostile alien life forms, awful weather conditions, points of interest that are located at the bottom of a poisonous ocean, or just overall are ugly to look at, there's really no incentive to waste your time there. Just pack up and go. On the flip side of that, if you come across an awesome planet with bountiful valuable resources, awesome wildlife, and lots of question marks on the map where you can find all kinds of upgrades and other goodies, make sure to explore it fully. Ultimately, that's what No Man's Sky is all about, exploration. So make sure that the places you're exploring are actually fun to explore. Number five, making money. We've already gone over a few ways to make a quick buck in No Man's Sky, namely the fact that anything you scan can be uploaded for some quick easy cash, but there's a much deeper economic system at play in the universe. Whenever you visit a market such as one on a space station, make sure to take note of the elements that are in hot demand. You'll be able to see when elements are selling for more than the galactic average, and when they're selling for less. If there's a star next to it, that means it's gonna sell for crazy money and you need to get your ass back down on one of those planets and get some more of it. You're also likely gonna run into some of these trade commodities, which are valuable items that become even more valuable if a particular trader is very interested in them. Make a note every time you visit a new system to know what commodities are in high demand. Often, you can buy a commodity on the cheap from one trader, take it to another in the same space station, and make double your money on it. Another good way to make money is by hitting up the asteroid fields. Shooting down asteroids is a fantastic way to farm Thamium, which, as we already talked about, is a very valuable resource since it can fuel your pulse drive and is used to make hyperspace fuel. But in this case, it can be valuable due to the fact that it's so plentiful and can be easy to sell if the asteroids are right next to a space station. Number four, exosuit upgrades. Exosuit upgrades are some of the best upgrades that you can find because they don't cost any materials to create. And once you get an Atlas past level one by following the trail to Nada and Polo after getting your hyperspace drive, you'll be able to get one every time you visit a space station. Every space station has the same interior. You've got a hangar where you can trade with fellow traders and potentially purchase a ship and two doors, one of which leads to a shop and the other one is locked by a level one Atlas pass. Through this level 1 door will always be an exosuit upgrade, sold at a relatively modest price no less. At least in the 4 or 5 times that I've gone through the door, there's been an exosuit upgrade in there. If there's not, let's just say it's a very likely scenario. You can also find them on planets just by flying around and being on the lookout for question markers. When you fly overhead, you'll easily be able to tell if it's an exosuit upgrade since it'll look like an abandoned dropship. Exosuit upgrades are so important because they expand your suit inventory, which, when combined with an upgraded ship, will make gathering materials a much more manageable task. Number three, buying a new ship. The ship that you start off with in No Man's Sky is appropriately junky. It almost kind of looks like a gummy ship from Kingdom Hearts. And one of your first priorities after fixing it and getting the hyperdrive working will be to try to get a new one. Getting a new ship is an expensive endeavor, but it's well worth it due to the fact that you'll probably be able to get a ship that has much more space. More space means more resources, which means more potential money which means that you'll have an easier time fueling up that hyperdrive to get you closer and closer to the center of the universe. Which, by the way, in case you didn't know, is the ultimate goal in No Man's Sky. The most reliable way of finding a new ship to purchase is by heading to a space station. Just wait around inside the hangar for a while and you'll eventually find a ship pulling in. Interacting with a ship will give you the opportunity to talk with its pilot and allow you to see how much they'll sell their ship for. Now, this is extremely important. Make sure before you buy a ship, to transfer all of the goods you currently have on your ship over to the new one, because if you don't, poof, gone. Number two, languages. There are a total of four alien factions in No Man's Sky, and three of those factions have a unique language that you can learn one word at a time. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's nothing that special to be honest, but learning bits of a language will help you understand what an NPC is telling you during a conversation which can better inform your decisions when you need to make a choice of how to respond to them. Sometimes making a good choice will lead to a nice blueprint, while making the wrong choice will cause your relationship with that faction to turn a little sour, and generally you'll get either nothing or some kind of negative effect. To learn these bits of languages, you're gonna have to seek out various monoliths, ruins, and encyclopedias strewn all across the galaxy. The better relationships you have with the various factions, the better your interactions will be, and chances are, the better items you'll get from talking with them. And finally, number one, melee jetpack jumps. 
Okay, so there's probably a better word for this and feel free to let me know about it in the comments, but whatever you want to call it, this is an absolutely invaluable technique in No Man's Sky because it makes trekking across the planet's surface much less of a slog. In order to do it, you need to press R1 to execute a melee attack, which will give you a quick burst of forward momentum. In the middle of that burst of speed, jump into the air with your jetpack and pulse it to keep the speed up as you glide over the surface. Always keep an eye on how much jetpack fuel you have left before you have to let it recharge because typically, you'll be moving at such a velocity that touching the ground will cause you some damage if you can't slow down. With this, you can pretty much cut your travel time down by half, making it not much of a concern to venture far away from your spaceship and really making it a lot more fun to explore and gather materials. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and if you found this video to be helpful in any way, why not do us a favor and hit that like button? You should maybe think about subscribing, because we here at Game Ranks put out awesome videos every single day. Thanks once again, my name is Mitchell, you can find me on Twitter at JurassicRabbit, and I'll see you next time.